All right, I'm back with a set of tailor-made M2s. These are the 2016 M2s. Uh, they have a little bit different color scheme than the 2017 M2s. I think the 2017, you can tell they have that lime green or that um, sort of fluorescent color scheme. This is a little more conservative, but it also has this dark um, sort of black chrome finish. This is probably what your clubs look like right now, right? Plenty of scratches on there. This is some melted plastic from driving range mats that will... We can get that off pretty easily. The face is not in great shape. Uh, the grooves are compacted with dirt. Um, other than that, these are great clubs, man. So here's what we're going to do. Um, I say I'm going to do a quickie because I know the steps that we do to polish the club get a little repetitive when you're watching the videos. This is the first time you've seen one of these videos. I'll explain the steps, but then I'll make another separate video with a little more detail on how to set up um, the polishing wheels, etc., so you can do this. And I, you know, I make these videos not to show you what I can do, but to show you what you can do. This is super simple stuff. It just takes a little bit of time. So um, the steps are always the same. On this one, um, I'm going to wash it. I have some uh, hot water there with some just just dish soap. Um, and then we're going to do this. So I am going to, I'm going to work on this, these smaller, more intricate areas with this, um, rotary tool. It's like a Dremel. It's an inexpensive one. I got it at Harbor Freight. They're not expensive when you shop at their Harbor Freight. It's just an, uh, inexpensive tool store, uh, in the States. If you're not from the States, I'm sure you have something similar, but so I'm going to work on this area with this tool just because it's, I don't, I don't want to have to mask off everything um, when I'm on the larger wheel. So once I finish with this area, I'm going to just throw a little bit of masking tape on that so I don't have to worry about it again. Um, I'm going to mask off this area and this area as I work through the heavier cutting compounds. So heavier, I have black, which is fairly coarse, a little more fine, a little more fine, and then that's for... Uh, just putting on a really nice shine to it. If you have the tools, uh, it's recommended best practice to change out the little pad as you move through the different compounds because you know you may have some leftover residue in this uh, from this compound as you move to the next one, and you're just going to be battling yourself with introducing more scratches as you're trying to get out scratches. So um, you know I've explained this before. Um, and how polishing works. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get um, we're trying to get away from these the randomness of all of these scratches. You'll see that they go in all these different directions, and that changes uh, the reflection from um, being dissipated light, um, and we want it to be reflective light. So let's look at. I drew a little crappy picture here. If this is the surface of your golf club and you see all these random scratches, you know, as the as the light shines onto this thing, all of these scratch the, the scratches kind of reflect them in various different directions. And that's your eyeball. So you never really get that true shiny reflective um, appearance to it because it's just going in a bunch of different directions. Imagine just dropping a mirror onto the ground and taking all the pieces and putting them in a pile, right? It's the the light's going to shine in all these different directions. When we polish, we want to make uniform scratches. So we want to take um, these compounds and introduce uh, straight lines into this crosshatch pattern so that when the light shines on it, uh, it hits the surface and reflects back to us and just has a really uh, high gloss appearance. So... Uh, you can do this a couple of ways. You can do it by hand with just sandpaper, working through various grits, uh, maybe starting with a 600, and then go to uh, like a 1,000, a 1,200, 1,500, and 2,000. It just takes longer. You could do it with the Dremel or the rotary tool, but you know, for each revolution of this thing, you're only covering about one inch of cutting. So that's why we want to use something larger like uh, this wheel here. So this is a six inch uh, denim wheel. And for every revolution that this makes, you're getting 
a little over 18 inches of cutting and this thing is traveling at uh, almost 3500 rpms so you get a lot more work done uh, a lot more quickly and again I'm lazy and I, I want to get you know get it done I want to do a good job but I don't want to take unnecessary time to do uh, the same steps that I can do um, with a power tool like that so uh, when we're done I might um, might sharpen the grooves I might maybe split that out into a smaller video just in case you're only looking to learn how to sharpen grooves this doesn't have that blasted face on it like I showed in my video where I restored the Wilson reflex so I don't think I'm gonna do that on this one we'll see how it looks I know I'm not gonna get all that out of there you'll see that I'm blasting through that black chrome here with the scratches right now you'll need to decide if you prefer to keep that finish or to have it shiny and I don't know that I want to blast through all that with um, the cutting compound so I think I'm just gonna hit it with just the white and see how it looks um, and then you know finish it with the green because that's just gonna bring out the shine so um, the paint fill it's okay I think maybe we can wash most of that but I just have some model paint if needed uh, of course we have rubbing alcohol these are makeup pad removers that this is gonna help us um, kind of get things clean in the smaller areas so that's a lot of setup for what I'm attempted to make a quick video but let's do it um, I'm gonna wash them if you don't know how to wash a club and you're on your own it's probably not the video for you it's just, it's just like washing dishes put them in soapy water use a soft nylon brush don't use um, a wire brush especially if you don't want to get scratches on these things you can use them on the face if you want um, to get in to some of those uh, deeper areas there but you can get most of it out with the nylon so why introduce more more scratching and damaging to the or damage to the club if, if you don't have to so you set that up you can watch me do it if you want it's only going to be um, super abbreviated for those steps and uh, again if, if you're interested in in knowing more about each of those individual steps let me know throw a comment or something down there to let me know what you're either curious about or confused about and hopefully I can clear some of that up for you so let's get started these are cool clubs um, I got the clubs washed and dried now. They're all sitting here. And now we're going to work on these um, smaller areas right by the logo. You see the bunch of scratches there. And again, I don't want to do that on the big wheel just because I don't want to mask all this off. It's just a pain in the ass. But the trade-off is, is I need to do more cleanup when I'm done. So I need to get into these areas if any of this wax gets in there. So uh, I'm going to start with the white. I'm going to work on these areas in here. Maybe throw a little green on it. See how it looks. Okay. 
Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Um, good enough so that I don't have to worry about getting the big wheel in there. I'll tape that off. I'm not going to worry about cleaning it right now in those corners. We do have to do that before we finish. But man, look at that. You get a really, really nice shine out of that. But this is where the payoff is right here on this side. Once we get this taped off, work through these same colors on the big wheel, that's going to look really nice. So let's do it. Stick with me here. Okay, so I got the smaller areas filled in and I masked that off just so I don't get a bunch of wax in the, the recesses. It's just cleanup sucks. I don't want to do that. So another reason is I don't want to damage that black chrome finish because, uh, well, they're not my clubs, but I am going to give it just a little bit of polishing with um, the white compound, not the brown and see how that turns out. And then I will finish it with the green just because there's no cutting action on the green. Um, but these should look pretty cool when we're done. And don't forget I have six others to do. So, all right, let's get started. so that's how the polishing turned out it's um, still pretty dirty in there I'm gonna have to clean all that out like I said the cleaning is probably the worst part the the club looks pretty good um, again that that black chromey finish it's hard to focus sorry uh, doesn't leave you a lot of options when you have something like that you can still see there's scratches in there they're not my clubs I don't want to cut through that so um, but if they weren't that black chrome finish you could really get um, some really great results with with that um, polishing the face here's here's a club I did the other day it's the uh, 
it's the D7. I thought it turned out really well, but the face was just as bad on this one. And now it's not. So um, it's up to you if you want to polish through that um, for similar results to that one. Yeah, it's all yours, but they're not my club. So uh, I want to treat them with respect. So. Um, I might fill that paint with some white. It's harder to do when it's on the curve like that, just because you can't get a even swipe. So you generally have to fill that and then wait till it completely dries and then go clean up the mess, as opposed to using a pad or something to get a majority off um, very quickly. But overall, I think this is gonna make them very happy. And um, yeah, let me get a, let me get it cleaned up and we'll get, get a final picture of it. All right, there it is, got it wiped up. On the inside there, that little plastic part, I just used this Meguiar's Ultimate Black, and that just kind of cleans up these plasticky areas. But again, looks really good. Um, yeah, hope you learned something. I got a little work to do, more clubs over there. So, thanks, man.